So yesterday I think I was discussing about what is disaster, what is hazard, what is risk, what is vulnerability, what are the various types of disasters that generally India is facing. Also I discussed what is a disaster management cycle and explained different parts of the cycle. What is impact, what is response, relief, recovery, rehabilitation, what is mitigation, what is prevention, what is preparedness, preparedness. I discussed all this yesterday. I told you that today I will take some three or four disasters and we will discuss about the causes for the disaster, effects of the disaster, how to mitigate or prevent that disaster. So we will discuss. Today we will take, as anyhow yesterday I discussed about flood. So today we will take flood. Flood is a major disaster in India. Every year almost 12 percent to 15 percent of India is prone to floods. So we will discuss about flood. Basically, many students, flood means they are most of them think flood means when heavy rainfall is there, rivers will flow out of their channel. River actually should flow in a channel. But when river comes out of the channel, we call it flood. But flood is very broad than that. Flood is not just the river flow. So, first of all, what I will do is I will discuss different types of floods and how they are caused. First, first let us try to understand. Flood in a very broad way. Flood in a very broad way. Yeah. And see, I would like to divide the floods for better understanding. For better understanding, we can even take coastal floods. Coastal. In coastal areas also, floods occur. Basically, what is a flood? As I discussed yesterday, Flood is temporary inundation of a large area. Flood is a temporary inundation. In Telugu, we call it as Muniki Podo. A large area, Muniki Podo. Okay. Temporary inundation of a large area. Friends, large area only. For example, if this classroom is filled by water, it is not called flood. If entire bin circle or paramata is filled by water, inundated by water, it is called flood. Just if a small is, uh, spot is filled by water, does not mean flood. So, large area. A large area inundated temporarily. Why I am saying temporarily? If it is always inundated, it is called a lake, a lake, a pond, which is always filled with water. Temporarily means actually that area should be dry, but because of excess water, it is inundated. That is the meaning of temporary inundation of a large area is called a flood. It can occur in several ways because of several reasons. For example, the coastal areas of India, if you take the coastal areas of India, the coastal areas can be flooded during cyclone. Friends, during cyclone, as winds come from the coastal area, during the tropical cyclone, Cyclone nothing but wind swirling very vigorously in a circular fashion in the sea. Now this, this cyclone moved towards the coast. A cyclone which is generated in Bay of Bengal moving like this, it will be pushed to India by winds. Actually here trade winds are coming, trade winds, which we will discuss later, trade winds. Okay, Winds will push the cyclone. Cyclone comes into India either here, here, wait up, wherever. We call it as landfall. Landfall means, see, when you are seeing the news, in news channel, you would have heard cyclone is in Bay of Bengal. It is going to come to Vishakapatnam in another three days. It's going to come to Orissa another four days, something. That's called landfall. Landfall means cyclone which is generated in the ocean will come out to the land. When it comes out to the land, it is very destructive. Because cyclone causes not only heavy rainfall, but also heavy winds. 
the cyclone comes now, heavy winds will come. They can even shatter the glasses. Trees may fall down, electric poles may fall down, small huts or uh, non pakka houses can be lifted up by the winds, very strong. During that time, the cyclone comes onto the land, it brings a lot of water into the land. So the coastal areas are inundated, flooded. So flood can occur because of cyclone. Tsunami, I no need to tell you. Tsunami, all of you know. Tsunami also fills the coastal area. The tsunami comes almost for 5 kilometers, 6 kilometers, entire land will be filled with water. That is also flood. Or normal storms. Whenever any storms occur, storm surge. During the storms also, water level increases in the ocean. It comes into the land, the coastal areas. Okay. So, these are called coastal flooding. Actually, flooding occurs even along the hill. Along the hills also, along the hill, flooding occur. How does it occur? How do, how do they occur? See, you take a hill, this is a land. Now, when there is a landslide, friends, landslide means along the hill, along the mountain, because of the slope, slope, the soil or debris or rocks, stones on the hill may fall down in large scale, not a small piece of rock falling down, large scale, large scale, the entire uh, debris falling down, soil coming down, coming down, it's called landslide. When the landslide occurs, landslide, let us say here a river is flowing, a river is flowing here. During the landslide, lot of mud, lot of debris, rocks will come from the hill, they will go into the river. Actually, this is the depth of river. But when you, for example, take a glass of water, throw some stones in that, water will come out now. Water comes out now. There is a story also, crow story, crow. Like that, when the debris from the hill comes into the river, river water will come up. It will flood the surrounding areas. That is another way of causing floods. Landslides. Okay. Landslides call floods. Cause floods. Not only that, somebody yesterday told no, melting of glaciers. Friends, even melting of glaciers also cause floods. For example, on the Himalayan mountains, as the glaciers melt a lot, then what actually they melt? If they melt more because of global warming or whatever, more water will come into the river. When more water comes into the river because of glacial melting, melting, the water will flood, come out of the channel. So, glaciers melting also. Excessive glacier melting. Normal glacier melting will not cause flood. Normal glacier melting is required for river actually. Without melting of glacier, river will have no water. I mean, North Indian rivers. Okay. So, in this way, hills also lead to floods. Now, friends, in the urban areas, floods are different. For example, before urban areas, I'll tell you about plains. I discussed about coastal coastal areas, then hilly areas. Now take the general plain area. General plain area also floods occur. The common common reason for floods that all of us know is more rainfall. Yesterday, Godavari flooded. Three months back, Brahmaputra flooded. What is the flood? More rainfall. During the monsoon season, sometimes rainfall rainfall is excess, more rainfalls. During excessive precipitation, I mean more rainfall, I mean copious rainfall, more rainfall, river water will increase, flood occur. So excessive rainfall is a reason. Excessive monsoon, in India, monsoon only gives rainfall. No? During monsoon only, so we got excessive monsoon rainfall. In India, monsoon causes twin problem, twin. Do you know what is twin problem? Twin problem of monsoon means one is flood, other is drought. Sometimes monsoon will not give any rainfall, very less rainfall. So drought, no water. Sometimes excessive rainfall, flood. I understand. So Indian monsoon gives us twin problem, either drought or flood. Sometimes at the same time, today Tamil Nadu drought. Assam flood, same day. Same day, Brahmaputra flood, Kaveri drought, no water. That is all possible in India. India is a strange country when it comes to this kind of things. Okay? That is why we are talking about interlinking of rivers now. 
why do you join two rivers? Some rivers may have more water, some rivers have less water. Rivers having more water, water is wasted going into Bay of Bengal. Rivers having less water is not sufficient. At one place we are wasting the water, one place there is no water. So if you interlink, interlink means join. If you interlink the rivers, the excess water of that river will come into this river. That's why we are doing it. That is because of the twin problem only. Actually, if you interlink the rivers, you know, flood can be reduced because water will come into this. Drought can be reduced. Both can be reduced. Okay. Anyhow, friends, in urban areas, see, before that, in the plain areas, even cloud burst. Yesterday, I was telling you about the cloud burst, right? Cloud burst means sometimes if a cloud has got 1 million liters of water, actually the water has to fall into one day or two days. But if entire water falls in one hour or two hours, in two hours entire cloud, all the water falls down, it's called cloud burst, which is very common in Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, these areas, very common. Okay. But even even man-made reasons, man is also a reason. For example, dam burst. Have you heard dam burst? Sometimes dams, for example, do you know two years ago in Kerala, floods occurred, a large scale floods. Kerala has never seen such kind of floods for almost eight years. Eight years back they occurred, again now they occurred, Kerala. Large scale floods. You might have heard no newspapers, Kerala, many districts are flooded. Many villages are completely inundated. Do you know how they occurred actually? Do you know what is a dam? Dam. What is dam? Tell me. Dam means, see, as the river is flowing, all the river water is going into the ocean. See, we are unable to use it. So, what we will do? See, river means, river is not a single stream. River will have many streams. For example, the Ganga river. Don't think Ganga river is a single stream. Ganga river means many streams will be there. Many streams will come and join the ocean. You understand? So they will select any one stream. For example, this stream is there, no? This stream, let us say, this side mountain is there, this side mountain is there. Sometimes, when a stream is there, this side mountain, mountain will be there. So it's easy for us to construct a large wall, dam actually. Because a large dam, the river water will not go out. It will stop there. All the water coming in the river, it will not go. It will stop there at the dam. As we can stop the water, the water level will increase. This is a river. You construct a dam to this much height. So all the water will store here, get stored. The stored water can use it for fishing, domestic purpose, agriculture, industrial purpose, any purpose. That is a dam. A dam is a structure built across a river to stop the river water. It actually creates a reservoir. Reservoir means all the river water will be stored as reservoir. That water can be used for multi-purpose. It can be used for generation of power. How do you generate power? From a great height, this is the height of dam. The water is stored till this much height. From here, if you leave the water, water falls. Water falls like a waterfall. From great height, water falls. So it has a lot of energy. The energy you use for turning the turbine. You put turbines, when the water falls, no great energy. All that potential, when the water is coming down, potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. The, the kinetic energy is converted into mechanical energy. You you turn the turbines, turbines red, mechanical energy. The mechanical energy is converted into electric energy by using electromagnetism or some other methods will be there. Like that, dams are useful for generation of electricity also. We call it as hydro power, hydro. We can generate power from coal, thermal power plants, nuclear power plants, hydro power plants also. So dam is a very useful thing, dam, okay. Now some, in Kerala what happened, you know, this is the, see, this is a dam. A dam can sustain the water till this much height only. There is a limit, some 90 meters, whatever. Up to this height, you can keep the water. But if the water is increasing more, you have to release. If you do not release the water, if the water goes beyond the level, dam will collapse and the dam will burst, will break down. The capacity of dam is only 90 meters, let us say. 
So once the level cross 90 meters, so you have to slowly release the water. Kerala, what happened is the level cross 90, it is still going up. But government could not take decision quickly. After some time, what happened? Suddenly they release the water. Now they have to release more water. And one more thing is, as they release the water suddenly, without warning the people, before releasing that dam water, we have to warn the local people to evacuate. Evacuate means you leave the place, go somewhere. Rehabilitation. Some best bureaucrats, at the time, some of the best bureaucrats actually were able to understand that they evacuated the villages. They sent the people to other places. Then the water left. But in some places, water came before only. So some deaths are also there. Understand? So in that way, dam burst can also cause floods. You understand? Friends, floods can occur even because of. I told you yesterday, you know, encroachment of wetlands. Encroachment of wetlands. That means, as I told you before, any place. Friends, any place, for example, this is a city, okay? City. In city, wherever there is rainfall, all the water comes to low lying area. Till, till. This is called wetland. Wetland. <coughs> Wetlands are low lying areas. They are always filled with water during rainfall, whatever. This is very important because wetlands will collect the water and they will send the water into the earth by percolation. Because of wetlands, the rainwater goes into the ground. So, groundwater will increase. In Hyderabad and in Chennai, Hyderabad and Chennai, they have filled the wetland, filled with buildings. Municipality gave permission. Actually, municipality should not give permission. But due to corruption, due to corruption, municipality gave permission. Not only corruption, they do not want to waste any land. They want to use all the land for development. Any land development only. Wrong mindset. Because of that, it's unplanned. Actually, unplanned. We call these things as unplanned urbanization. Have you heard? Unplanned. Means urbanization means increase in the urban population. Urban population will increase, buildings will come up, the you know, shopping malls, everything come up without proper planning. Because of which what happens, you know, number one, tomorrow when there is heavy rainfall, not heavy, even normal rainfall also, water has no place to go. Water has to go somewhere now. But all the paths, the path of water, all paths of water is choked, choked, stopped. So, water cannot go anywhere. That's why water will stagnate there. It's called urban flooding. So one problem. Second problem is now because you have filled the area with buildings, where is the place for rainwater to go into the earth? Rainwater has to go into the earth. No? We, we call it as replenishment of repl replenishment of aquifer. What aquifers? Aquifers are nothing but under us, under the inside the earth, stones, rocks will be there, which will store the water. A lot of water will be there under us, water. That is called ground water or aquifer. We are using the water now. Every day we are using the water by, by using bore, pump, right, motor. So you have to fill it again, fill it. If wetlands are closed, how can the water be filled? That is why today in Chennai and Hyderabad, there is no ground water. Hyderabad has got big water problem. There is no good water. They are getting water from nearby river or nearby lakes or water tankers are coming. There is no water. Next 100 years, if they can, if you can do the same thing, water scarcity will come. We will get the zero day. Actually, zero day is a concept or day zero. Day zero. Day zero means a little different. I am telling you, within next 35,000 days, Hyderabad, water will be over. How, how can you tell that? I know the water resources in Hyderabad are some 10,000 million liters, from some number. The usage of water is 1 million liter. So within next 35,000 days, it will be over. It will be over. So now today is day 35,000. Day 35,000, 34,900. Like that, day 
days will pass. After 35,000 days, we get day zero. Day zero means no water. No water at all. The day will come to Hyderabad, Chennai also. Okay. Now, so as you understand, one of the reasons for floods is encroachment. Friends, another reason for flood is choking of drainages. Friends, whenever there is rainfall, oh, water has to go through drainage. But most of drains are blocked. You know why? By plastic. As we are throwing the plastic covers in the drainages, these plastic covers will never be degraded. They will always stay. As they are going in the water, they will be stuck. Drainage has to go through holes now. Near the hole, the plastic is stuck. Water cannot go. Like that, if you observe the drainages of enter Vijayawad or Hyderabad, drainages, most of them are choked by plastic. So, water cannot flow. That is another reason. Water cannot flow. Water will inundate the areas. So, do you understand now the meaning of flood? I told you only few causes. There are many causes of floods. So, don't think that flood means only rainfall. Flood can be anything. Anything can be flood. One more reason for flood, you know, is siltation. Siltation of river channel. Do you know what is the meaning of siltation of river? I'll tell you. Yeah, what is what he is telling is, if you put water harvesting system, it will be good. Yes, I agree with that. I'll come to that. Right now, I'm telling you the causes for floods. Next topic is how to solve this problem of flood. What are the measures we have to take to solve this problem of floods? In that, one of the points is rainwater harvesting systems. Okay, we'll come to this. Right? Huh? Government. Government will do. Government is doing actually. For example, Tamil Nadu government has passed a rule that all apartments have to put water harvesting systems. Okay. See, you, you, he's asking why government is not doing. Government is not government is trying to do, but is not very strict about that. Government will focus on things that are developed development. Generally, most governments will not think long term. No government will think after uh, eight years water problem will come. So from now onwards, we have to uh, save the water. That kind of thinking is very rare among the governments, not only India, any government. Okay, So that's why you people have to go into the system. If you people go into IAS or water offices system, you can actually, which your district is working in, you can uh, get things done. You can build water harvesting systems. You can save water. You can do many things. Okay, So don't ask me why government is not doing. Why government is not doing? I don't know. They are not doing that. Solve. They have to do. I also know that. Okay? Now, friends, see. So, siltation of river. What is siltation of river channel? Siltation of river means the river is flowing, friend. This is the depth of river. Just imagine every day some soil is coming, falling in the river. Every day soil, mud coming. After three, four years, what happens? After three, four years, the water level will rise, water comes out. It is happening. Why you know? If this is the river channel, river channel, on both sides of the river, generally, forest will be there. Mostly forest, rivers are in the forest zone. And the forest trees are there, are trees. The forest trees will hold the soil, hold. So when the rainwater is coming, soil will not come. Soil erosion will not happen if trees are there. But if you cut the trees, cut the trees means deforestation. If you do deforestation, no, no trees are there. Then soil will be loose. Then when there is rainfall, the soil will flow into the river. It's called soil erosion. Because of deforestation, because of deforestation, soil erosion occurs. Soil erosion. Because of the soil erosion, as soil is coming into the river, river will river level will raise and flooding occurs. Flooding. There's another reason why floods are occurring. Deforestation is another reason. Because of deforestation, siltation. Okay. Friends, I think I have brief, briefly explained about various causes for the floods in India. Anywhere but India generally. Okay. After understanding the causes, let us look at the solution. How do you solve this problem? Again, to solve this problem, let us take each of the points, try to understand them. Okay. For example, cyclone, tsunami, storms are there. The coastal floods. Uh, how can you stop the coastal flood? 
Can you stop the cyclone like this? Can you stop the tsunami like this? No. So how can you stop? The only way is you cannot stop them, but you can reduce their force, reduce their impacts. We call it as mitigation. In disaster management, mitigation is a very important thing. Mitigation means some things you cannot stop. The COVID is there. COVID came into India. You cannot completely stop it, but you can reduce the effect of COVID. How? By isolating, wearing mask, sanitization. That is called mitigation. Like that, cyclone will come. You cannot. Nobody can stop cyclone. Tsunami will come. Stop. This natural calamity. No, nobody can stop. But you can reduce its impact. How? Along the coastal area, you do afforestation, plant trees. Along coastal area, for example, if this is the this is the coastal area, almost from the coast to almost four kilometers, almost five kilometers from the coastal area, five kilometers you go for plantation. Generally, what type of plants will grow in the coastal area? No, mangrove plants, mangrove, friends, mangrove, mangrove plants. Are type of trees actually mangrove are type of trees that can grow in salt water. Here the water is salt water; they can grow. We call them as halophyte. Halophyte means they like salt. Trees which like salt, halophytes. Okay. When we study about the different types of forests and different type of vegetation, we will study about the mangrove vegetation also. Mangrove trees are very interesting. For example, do you know Sundarban? Sundarban, West Bengal. It's an island actually. Sundarban is the world's world's largest mangrove forest. Sundarban, lot of mangrove trees. Do you know why it's called Sundarban? Because in Sundarban has a lot of mangrove trees. No, among those trees, one tree name is Sundari. Sundari. Sundari is one type of tree. That tree is mostly there. Many trees are there, but Sundari trees, Sundari trees are mostly occurring in the Sundarban. The tree name is Sundari. Sundari means in Hindi, beautiful. It's a beautiful tree, Sundari tree. That's why it's called Sundarban. Tigers. Have you seen the movie Life of Pi? Life of Pi. They show tiger, no? The large tiger. The tiger is Sundarban tiger only. Sundarban has tigers also. Mangrove forest tigers. They are very interesting tigers actually. They can swim lots. Compared other tigers, they can swim a lot because they are in the island, no? They swim every day, no? So they can swim a lot. Okay. Now, friends. So, mangrove plantation. What is the solution for? Coastal coastal flooding. What is solution? Mangrove plantation or afforestation. We call it as friends. What is afforestation? Planting more trees. Trees means not just for ten meters, almost four kilometers. So that when tsunami occurs, no, as the tsunami water travels four kilometers in the forest, it will stop. It cannot come outside mostly. But what we are doing? We shall take we shall but now. Vishal Patno, if this is a beach, no, here buildings are there, very close to beach. From the building, you can just jump into the sea coast. You cannot jump. I'm joking, but it's very close. It should not be so close actually. But the problem is urbanization, unplanned urbanization. We don't plan. Yesterday I told you, you know, how Indians think. Generally, we think that disaster will not come. If it comes, nothing will happen to us. At that time, we will see. That mentality is very common in India. That's why in Vishakhapatnam also the buildings are very close to the coast area. Should not be like this. Okay. Anyhow, friends, then not only actually if the country has got a lot of money, we can even build sea groins. Sea groins means along the sea coast, large walls are built, large wall. So that, for example, this is a sea coast. In the coast, build a large wall like a dam. So when the water comes tsunami, it will stop. All will fall down. But at least the force will reduce in a force. During cycle, we can stop some force. Okay, we call them as sea groins, sea groins, or sea walls, sea wall, wall, sea wall. But that is too expensive. So better thing is uh, coastal plantation. Actually, friends, coastal plantation has another advantage also. Not only stopping the cyclones, stopping is mitigating. Mitigating cyclones or mitigating the tsunami, it has another advantage also. You know what? Generally, we should not pollute the sea. Sea is already getting polluted. So, on the land, any industrial waste, any agricultural waste, any domestic waste, 
any sewage on the land goes into the ocean. We go to Vaisak Beach. Black water will be there. Very black water because all the waste release. Okay, Chennai also these days. Even the Machri Patna also these days. All the waste is released into the sea directly. See, nobody will ask for sea means. River means someone will come and beat you. Lakes means, okay. So if you go, if you do afforestation, as the waste water is going to the ocean, it will go through the forest. As it goes through the forest, it will be purified. Any water going through the trees will be somewhat purified because trees will absorb some of them. There is another advantage of coastal plantation, coastal afforestation, coastal afforestation. Another advantage is it reduces the ocean pollution. Ocean pollution, okay. Now, friends, I have told you the reasons for uh, solutions for coastal flooding. Now we will go to solutions for hills, flooding the landslides, glaciers. Friend, but these will appear to you very broad. So you have to write them at the last in answer. Okay, very broad things. First of all, we have to control the landslide. But controlling landslide is a separate topic. Just like how I am discussing floods among disaster, today I am discussing flood no flood. Like that, landslide is also a disaster. Landslide. And to stop the landslides, there are many measures which I will take separately. Landslide means from the, from the slope, land is sliding. To stop the landslide, you can build wall. There are also walls that are built called retaining walls. Retaining walls can be built or you there's something called buttressing the toe, excavating the top. We will study all those things. Top will be removed, toe is buttressed, means uh, extended. So that landslide can be reduced. Even underground water pipelines should be flexible so that leakage will not happen. Landslides occur because of leakage of water also. So we will discuss all these things in the landslides class. Just remember that landslides have to be stopped by following many measures. It will reduce the floods. Next, glacier. Glacier melting is a very different topic. How can you stop glacier melting? By reducing the global warming in no other way. But it is a very broad thing. For example, Connecting the global warming with floods is a very broad idea actually. If you can, but how do you reduce the global warming? First of all, you should know what is global warming. The topic has to happen for you. Global warming means the atmosphere's temperature is increasing. Temperature of atmosphere is increasing. Why? Because we are releasing more carbon dioxide and other gases. We call them as greenhouse gases. Actually friends, greenhouse gases are those gases, if greenhouse gases are there in the atmosphere, in the atmosphere no, from the earth, from the earth, heat radiations are going out. If this is earth no, from the earth, heat radiations, if this is the earth, from the earth, heat radiations are going out every day. But if greenhouse gases are there now, these greenhouse gases will trap these waves. They will not let the heat go outside the earth. If heat is not going outside the earth, heat will remain in the atmosphere. If that happens, atmosphere becomes very hot. So what we have to do? Reduce the releasing of greenhouse gases. We have to reduce the emission of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Actually, traffic vehicles, industries, burning of coal in thermal power plants, they are all releasing a lot of carbon dioxide. We have to reduce all of them. Okay. Anyhow, this topic is over. Now, let us move on to Let's move on to, do you know friends, construction of dams. For example, I told you, you know, excessive rainfall is the most important reason for floods. How do you control excessive rainfall? Can you stop the rainfall like this? No. Then you know, what can you do? Tell me some ideas. How do you reduce? Rainfall cannot be stopped. Rainfall is required. But after the rainfalls, the water can be managed. How do you manage? 
how can it store reduce funds? Actually, see, rainwater, if you allow the rainwater to go into the earth, then flooding will not occur, no. Somehow, whatever rain is coming, you have let the rain go into the earth. For that, different methods are there. One method somebody is telling is rainwater, rainwater harvesting. Friends, rainwater harvesting is not a new method. In Gujarat and Rajasthan, it is there from thousands of years. They call it as Bavolis. If you go to Gujarat, Rajasthan, Bavolis, or some people call them as Jalaras. Actually, Jalaras, Jalaras, Bavolis, they are traditional water harvesting systems. Traditional, very old, water harvesting. You know what they do? In Rajasthan and Gujarat, for every house, whatever rain falls on their terrace, rain falls in surrounding, they will build a small canal. All the water goes to canal. They will connect the canal to a large tank, underground pit, ground pit. All the rain falling in their house, around the house, goes into the tank. It goes in tank. So from the tank, it can go into the earth also. Percolate into the earth. Or if they want to stop it, they can put stones or rocks, whatever. Now we can do plastering. We do plastering now, the water will stay in the tank. This water is fresh water only, right? Rain water, no, pure water only. No. It can be used for domestic purpose or any purpose, agriculture, whatever. So, water harvesting system means rain water, instead of letting, letting it waste, save the water for later. In a way, it will also reduce flood. flood because all the water is coming in the tank, you know. How can the flood occur? Okay? Second thing is, friends, check dams. Friends, check dams are different. Normal dam, see, normal dam is also correct only. Normal dam is also okay. Normal dam is also a good thing. For example, excessive rainfall is there. If excessive rainfall goes into all the streams, you know, flood occurs. But if you construct the dam, when excess water will come, dam will reduce the water. Dam will store the water. Actually, river can take only 1,000 liters. But today, 2,000 liters of water came. Dam will store some 1,000, releasing only 1,000. So, construction of dams will reduce the flood. But actually, same thing can fast flood also. I told you, know, dam burst. That is different. Excess to unplanned. Generally, dams can reduce the floods. Do you know Damodar? Actually, Damodar River, Damodar River in West Bengal, once upon a time, some uh, 30, 40 years ago, Damodar River, every year it used to cause floods, cause floods. Many people used to die. It's called as Sorrow of Bengal. They used to call, they used to call Damodar River as the Sorrow of Bengal. What is Sorrow, friends? What is Sorrow of Bengal? Sorrow, grief. Means it's actually making people of Bengal every year die. They suffer, they used to suffer. Then, what they have done? Damodar Valley Corporation formed. Damodar Valley Corporation, the company. What they have done, you know? They started building dams. By building dams, slowly they stopped the floods. From then onwards, even till today, Damodar is not giving any kind of flood. Floods are almost controlled. So, dam is a good solution. But friends, everywhere you cannot build dams. To build a dam, you require the right topography. Right mountain, right support is required. You cannot build everywhere there. What are check dams? Check dams are small. This was I told you. See, dam will build a single dam. It can stop the water. Dam stops the water, creates reservoir. But check dam is not like that. Check dam, water is coming very fast. Let's say during the rainfall, water is flowing very fast. We have to stop the water. So what will you do? If this is the area. This is the area. One check dam here. One check dam here, one check dam here, here. You understand? This water is flowing, it will stop, 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 keep on stopping. As the water stops, you know, soil erosion can be reduced. If the water is going very fast, all the soil will be 
removed. If all soil is removed, agriculture becomes difficult. You cannot grow crops. So soil has to be conserved, saved for the check dam. When check dams are there, the water cannot go very fast. The water will flow. Because of check dam, one advantage is soil erosion will stop. Second advantage is as the water is stopping, no, stopping, it will go into the soil. Generally, before the water nartha, no, wait for some time, the water will go into the earth. So, check dams will increase aquifers. Check dams will reduce soil erosion. Soil erosion will be reduced. Second thing, ground water will be increased. Because of check dams, water percolation will increase. Percolation of water will increase. So, ground water increases. Percolation of water increases. So, ground water also increases. Simply speaking, it will replenish the replenish the aquifer. I told you aquifer. Aquifers are replenished. Replenishment means aquifer means what? Ground water. As you are taking the ground water, it is your responsibility to fill the ground water. You have to take the water to give it back now. Fill the water now. The filling of water is called replenishment of ground water or aquifer. Okay. So friends, not only these, even Grass cover, grass cover, see, of course, afforestation is very good, afforestation is good, plant trees, if you are able to plant trees, you know, the rain water will not cause flood, because the rain water, if it goes directly into river, it will cause flood, but you are stopping it now, if you grow trees, you know, rain water will stop, trees will stop them, so flood will not occur, flood will not occur. If you let the rainwater go in river, floods will occur. But afforestation is not always possible. In some places, at least grow grass. Grass is also good. Grass. So grass cover also reduces floods. Yes, sir. Now, friend, this is about the extra rainfall. Now, during the cloud burst, during the cloud burst, specifically the cloud burst, the, rain, the forest, the dams, they will reduce the effect of cloud burst. They will also have a cold burst. When a lot of water comes through, these things will actually stop the water. They will help in that case also. Then, friend, siltation of river, I told you now, siltation of river can be stopped by again same. What is it? Afforestation only. Then, uh, come to urban areas. Urban areas. Urban areas, how do you stop the urban flood? We call it as urban floods. Urban floods means floods in Hyderabad, Chennai, means urban areas, any urban area, not Hyderabad, any urban area. How do you stop the urban floods? Once again, for example, urban floods can be stopped by proper city planning. Proper city planning means you should not allow, you should not give permission for construction of structures. In the wetlands, wetlands shall be conserved. Actually, internationally, also globally, all countries made an agreement that agreement that we should conserve the wetlands. So, what is that convention, friends? Ramsar Convention. What is that? Ramsar is a place in Italy. There, Iran. Sorry, Iran. Ramsar is a place in Iran. I'm sorry. There, many countries met in a place called Ramsar. They made convention, all countries, that we have to conserve the wetlands. Friends, wetlands are very important. I will take a separate class on wetlands because wetlands have many advantages. It will replenish the aquifer, it will reduce the flood, it will reduce the drought, drought also. It can reduce the pollution, pollution also. It will encourage the biodiversity, it will, it will help in many plants and trees growing, wetlands. So, wetlands has been advantages. So, we have to save the wetlands. Okay. So, since city planning, one very important thing is save the wetlands. Don't allow the, don't give permission for construction of buildings in the low lying areas. Low lying areas, don't give permission. Okay. Then, friends, do you know what Telangana government is doing? They are building artificial ponds. Artificial ponds means what you know? 
actually before the during kakatiya time during kakatiya time no kakatiyas telangana used to have lot of lakes it's called a region of thousand lakes many lakes are there when now the rainfall no all water goes into the lakes and this lake water is used for agriculture agriculture but now all lakes are almost like unused they are not using it telangana so, government actually trying to again renew the lakes lakes are mostly plugged by the sand they are again digging the lake again replace the lake call art not only artificial lakes original lakes also they are making deeper so that during rain rain season all water will be stored kakatiya snow very well telangana is a region with very less rainfall when a region has less rainfall you have to say all rain water see states like kerala which has more rainfall it's okay from what is wasted states like telangana having less rainfall every drop is important you cannot let the water go into ocean you have to save it store it that's why kakatiya has used to build thousand lakes now telangana government also building the lakes so when there is rainfall water will be saved also construction of artificial ponds construction of artificial ponds okay mission kakatiya telangana government called it mission kakatiya renewal of the old and lakes not lakes ponds ponds and lake water okay so friends so that's how you can actually stop the encroachment of wetlands i mean urban floods urban floods now friends choking of drainage the best thing is reduce the usage of plastic already these days we are getting the everybody we are aware no in some shopping malls also they don't give plastic covers only paper covers you should not use plastic because all the plastic that you are using it will never degrade friends remember just imagine all dead bodies dinosaur tiger or grandparents all dead bodies are lying here nothing is degraded how it will be very bad no anything that is used should be degraded it should not be there but plastic is not like that the plastic also that you are throwing your grass and also can take usage it will never get degraded that is spoiling the earth so the drainage is we have to stop using the plastic and the better drainage system is important better drainage system that is there are the various solutions of controlling the floods now friends along with this one very important thing is dams also how do you, i told you dam burst to no dam burst how will you stop the dam burst by managing dams very well technically build the dams very strong and never cross the limits that also you can write dam burst Next one, friends. See, early warning is very important. Early warning means, see, generally you can forecast. Forecast means you can understand that floods are going to come in two days. So you can forecast. Most of the floods are not sudden occurring. See, actually, friends, floods can be sudden occurring. Sudden occurring. and some floods have some warning period what is it warning period warning period warning period for example see let us say rainfall is increased in the last two days rainfall is increasing so you understand that within next two days if rainfall continues no next two days brahmaputra river will be flooding godavari will be flooding then what you will do you have some time no you are able to forecast it's called early warning early warning means we are able to forecast basically friends once you are for able to forecast then you will give early warning early warning means you will warn the people which people will warn the people who are lying along the river bank this is the river along the river banks so people will be there we will warn them see within next two days water is going to come out you are all going to submerge then what they will do they will evacuate the place they leave the place now sometimes some people will go go they say no water will not come i am there for 20 years water never came they talk like this so what will you do you will 
send them. We will send them. So, the government has to take action. Sometimes you see in a region, sub collector, the police department, all of them will go to every house. They will use the house within the next two days. What is going to come in? They say, no, I will not go miss. Send them. And then you finally have to send all of them away. Then, what happens sometimes? Flood will not come. Flood will not come sometimes. Then the people will be shouting. See, we left everything, we went away. Last day, I don't have labor money also. Will you give the money? They talk like this. But the government has no option. Because if they do not send them, if it occurs, then what will they will do? They will die you now. So, compared to dying, it is better to stay hungry for two days. So, it is a such case you have many times in Godavari area, it happens. Okay? So, friends, some floods you can forecast, you can think it is going to come. Such a cyclone. Cyclone, you know, beforehand only. Cyclone is going to come, it may come anytime soon, forecast. But sometimes, floods are sudden occurring, sudden. Example, landslide. Sometimes, landslide occurs suddenly. Suddenly, floods will come. Such things you cannot do anything. Means early one, not possible. Or cloud burst, cloud burst, suddenly water comes out, you cannot do anything. Or dam burst, a dam burst, you can, nobody will tell no, dam is going to burst next two days, nobody knows that, right? So, but some floods are not occurring. Those floods, no early warning, but some are having reasonable warning period. So, these kind of things we have to be safe, we should be able to make use of the situation. That's why, for example, I heard about rhymes. Rhymes means regional, regional integrated, regional integrated, M means multi-hazard, regional integrated multi-hazard early warning system, this is developed for Asia, Asia and Africa, Asia and Africa. So what it does is not only a flood, several disasters, see multi-hazard, different hazards, floods, cyclones, for, for possibility of drought, or sometimes tsunami if possible, very rarely. So tsunami actually they'll find by using bios. Bios, I'll tell you about that later. So multi-hazard means different hazards they can forecast. Forecast and they give early warning. So that government can evacuate people. But how will government Tell the people, for example, government came to know floods are going to come. How to how to tell people? They cannot go to every house and lock the door. The floods are going to come. They cannot tell like that. No. Every home they cannot go. No. So what they will do? They can use different communication channels. Friends, what are these different communication channels that can be used? Huh? Yeah, for example, newspapers. Newspapers. Floods are not going to come within one hour. Two days, three days. So today evening I came to know. Tomorrow morning, newspaper warning. Floods are come, going to come in these areas. The mentioned area. People from these areas should evacuate immediately. Newspaper or TV channels. TV channels, government or hotel, they will hotel. Highlights. Next six hours continuously. Early floods are going to come. People are going to miss. They want to use that one also for TR. Of course, they do what they have to do. So TV channels. Then radio. All India radio. In some rural places, of course, these days everybody has a TV, but imagine some people do not have TV, radio they use, radio channels. Then even satellite communication, satellite communication or using the local panchayats, they will inform all the panchayats and panchayats will send, now in Andhra Pradesh is easy, in Andhra Pradesh we have Sachwalayam, Sachwalayam volunteers are there, for every 300 houses, 300 or 250 houses are. For every 50 houses, there is a volunteer. For every 3 50 houses, the system is there. Sachwale, right? So now it is easy. They will go to every home, they can tell the flood is going to come, we will use the place. What is that? Yeah, mic announcement. In auto, they will go. We cannot hear also because most of the mics are spoiled. Okay? But we have tried to understand. So, friends, the point is through different means and methods, you can, this is called as information dissemination. Friends, always remember. Dissemination of information is not easy. Dissemination of information is not very easy. In a country like India, where mics are not working, people, TV channels, they will not bother. News channels, they will not see. So only Jabardas they will see throughout the day. Or Big Boss, they will see. So in country, or people are not aware. People, they say, hey, government will say, every day something is there. Yesterday, said floods, nothing came. Today, drought, nothing came. Tomorrow, there is a cyclone. Who bothers? Mindset. So very difficult for people in India 
dissemination in Madhya Pradesh. India people stay in different places. You go to that place, somebody will stay, or at least somebody stays. You cannot go and tell him no. So difficult, actually. So dissemination information, early warning. Then friends, next important thing is, Next important thing is preparedness. What is that? Preparedness means you should prepare. For example, you have evacuated. For example, this is a river. You have evacuated people for next one kilometer, two kilometers evacuated. But let's may come to three kilometers, four kilometers, then what you can do? You cannot evacuate entire city, no. You can evacuate to some extent. The real people should be ready. One is ready. I mean, but preparedness means when the floods come, what you have to do? So, you have to keep you know, warm clothes, you have to keep some blankets, some medicines, you have to keep some food ready. So, if floods come, no, you cannot go out. Sometimes, when floods come, all the communication channels will break, all the roads will be filled. You cannot go out of your home. You have to stay inside the home for next five days till the water is gone. So, you have to keep, uh, you have to keep the food prepared five days. Very important, actually. Medicines for five days. So, something happens, heart patient is there in the home, uh, when the flood comes, exactly at that time only the heart stroke. It's very common. Okay. So, you have to keep some medicines common. So, this is called preparedness, be prepared. Okay. That is, a, that is called preparedness at the house level, but at the panchayat level, municipality level, preparedness means training the people, train the people in search and rescue operation. I told you, you know, search and rescue. When the flood attacks, everybody has to go and search the people and rescue them. Somebody may be under the water, somebody may be head inside the water, whatever. Go and rescue them. Search and rescue operations are very important. Friends, do you know what is the first line of defense? First line of defense, what is it? See, friends, always remember when anything happens, you know, earthquake, anything, landslide, volcano, anything happens, you know, tsunami. It takes some time for government to come. Government immediately, police, army will not come within one minute. It will take some time. Police will come in some two hours, army will come in some two years, sorry, two days, whatever. It takes some time. In that time, who will save you? CRPF. CRPF also takes two days' time. Okay, not CRPF. Local people, for example, in a place, cyclone came. The local youth are there now. They have to act like police. They have to act like defense. They have to go and search and rescue. So they should be trained. So, who are the first line of defense anytime? Local community. Friends, local community should be trained. You cannot always believe in the government. When you are the first law, no, you are trapped, no? Government will come sometime. I'll wait for you. cannot believe in the government. Next time. That's why it's responsibility of the government to train the local youth. People in the coastal area train them for tsunami rescue, cyclone rescue. People in the mountain hills train them for landslide operations. People in uh, Northeast train them for earthquake operations. People in uh, cities train them for fire accidents. Suddenly fire occurred. What should you do? Fire accident. Understand? Or bomb blast. What should you do? Bomb blast. Or some industrial accident. All the industrial labor, industrial labor shall be trained for industrial accidents. Or for, if industrial accident happens, what they should do? That is called training. So training is very important. Do you know national disaster Management Authority conducts training programs. National Institute of Disaster Management. National Institute of Disaster Management conducts training programs. They even give certificates. You also can go take some two months training. They'll train you. If you are from the coastal area, if cyclone comes, what you have to do? They'll train you. You can take training, get certificate also from them. So I suggest all of you to go and get trained in something. Okay, it'll be good. Uh, also, okay, and so this is, this is another thing. I am telling you different ways in which the impact of flood can be reduced. So preparedness, search and rescue, train the people. Okay, so uh, keeping the local communication very strong. Do you know, friends? Some people what they say. Some people say that local community has more knowledge than the government to some extent because local people are. are a person who is staying along the river bank, from his forefathers, grandfathers, grandforefathers, floods occur every year. So they know. If flood occurs, what have to they know? 
the old people old people they have a lot of knowledge because old people in their 80 years of life they would have seen at least 10 floods each flood they know how they survived so compared to the government they know better so government has to take their help their ideas to uh, prepare the safety plan friends government has to prepare safety plan safety map i told you know vulnerability assessment vulnerability map vulnerability assessment so the, the map of the place what are the vulnerable pockets told you know low lying areas are more vulnerable old age homes more vulnerable uh, play schools more vulnerable so government has to focus on those places during the floods they are first go to those places so vulnerability map safety plan safety plan means during the flood during the fire accident during something how to escape there is a route of escaping this is a village friend this is a river if you are all here how to escape better all of you go to this side because this side hill is a hill so you have to tell the people if the flood comes all of you go this direction a small boy may be going in this direction it's not a good idea or somebody may be going in this direction if you go in this direction it's a low lying area they are going low lying area you should not go you have to go towards high, high high level high rise area so you should be trained in your village that is the high platform to go there doing first that kind of safety map shall be given to people safety map understand so these are all very important in disaster management disaster management okay now friends friends there are there are both see mitigation of disaster what is mitigation reducing the impact of disaster how do you reduce the impact of disaster either you can follow structural measures you can follow structural measures or non non structural measures structural and non structural measures have to follow okay i'll tell you the difference between both of them structural measures means for example construction of shelters construction of shelters means i'll tell you this is a village friend in this village this is the high high area high lying area so all high lying area large shelter shall be constructed so what happens during the time of flood as everything is flooded by water no so all of them will go to high rise area high rise area where water cannot come their shelters are there they can stay there for next four five days they can stay there all of them it should be like three floors ground floor cattle first floor people next floor children like that i mean because if the water is increases no cattle can die no problem next floor adults can swim next floor children are there means they can construct the floors no structure is called structural measures or even afforestation is also a structural measure if you do forestation along the river this river no if you develop the forest along the river then also impact of the flood can be reduced or construction of dam is also a structural measure or construction of check dams or construction of ponds artificial ponds there are structures we are building them structures for example you can build the houses on stilt I have seen houses on stilt. Stilt, stilt means if this is a house, no. The house below the house still still there. Means the house will be above the stilt. So that during the flood, no, the water will not come into the house. Why? House is raised. Don't construct the house directly on the floor. I mean on the land. Raise the house using stilt, stilt, and construct the house. So that when the flood comes, no, water should not come into the house. Or Are constructing the house only on raised platform, or if there is a mound, constructing the house behind the mound. When flood water comes through, mound can stop it to some extent. Also, constructing water resistant houses. Water resistant. Why? Because during the flood, when water comes into the house, no, flood occur every year. Every water comes into the house, no, house will be. destroyed spoiled so the material that you use for the house should be 
are resistant to water so this is the water comes nothing should happen to the house such kind of structure you have to build you understand so we call this as structural mitigation measures structural mitigation measures whereas you also have you also have non structural mitigation measures what are non structural told you know early warning system so early warning system you can before and vacate the place vacate the place or training program i told you know training in the uh, search and rescue evacuation training so you are prepared so that effect will be less it's called mitigation okay you can an example of rhymes early warning not only warning see friends not only forecasting along with forecasting dissemination of information is very important forecasting as well as dissemination of information is very important okay anybody tell me other non structures capacity training can also be called as capacity building training can also be called as capacity building means you make the youth build the capacity to save such and rescue during the disaster time of disaster okay capacity building then you know better for information communication establishing good communication channel friend you cannot establish a communication channel during the flood before the flood only establish a good communication channel you have to prepare that if a flood occurs how should we communicate preparing the safety plan safety plan vulnerability or risk assessment risk is different vulnerable is different i told you, you know vulnerability i give example of gujarat earthquake yesterday i give uh, example of earthquake gujarat risk i give example of samir patta village tsunami okay vulnerability or risk assessment plan safety plan okay even having some fund immediately having some fund so all these things come as non structural mitigation measures the structural mitigation measures so using these things you can reduce the effect of the flood flood can flood can be prevented also friends there are mitigation or mitigation what are prevention methods how do you prevent a flood prevent means see mitigation means flood will come reduce the impact prevention means stop the flood how do you stop the flood sometimes dams can stop the flood shut dams can stop the flood sometimes you know these things cannot stop the floods they are mitigation you know uh, ponds can stop the floods afforestation sometimes can stop the floods so some of them are for stopping the floods or reducing the floods but whereas some of them water resistant shelters they are only mitigation they cannot stop the floods prevention is different mitigation is different you understand yeah tell me diversion of canals is also good Okay, now let's into flood resistance. Okay, I'm sure other types of interlinking of rivers also you can write. You can write interlinking. Interli actually is a very long. interlinking of rivers is a very big concept. We will discuss separately about that. Interlinking of rivers also will reduce the floods and droughts. Okay. Shivaji Nagar. Shivaji Nagar. What is that? River wall. River wall. Yeah. See, I think I told yesterday. in a river the floods when the floods the pot is flooded in the river when the water increases it comes out no you can stop it by constructing the wall wall along the river so in the structural measures in the structural measures you can write river embankment river embankment it's also called as levy friends actually levy can be natural levy or man made levy natural levy means you you go to some river you see no this is a river on either side of the river this is said to some height stones will be there to some height sand will be there this is a river friend river is flowing this side to some height sand will be there stones this also who built that naturally whenever water comes out no water will bring some stones and deposit deposits the stones here they are called natural levy but we can build artificial levies or artificial levy is a river on both side build a wall or put some stones and rocks so that when water level rises flood will not come flood will not come it's called as river embankment or river levy river levy okay that is also a structural measure to prevent the flood or sometimes to mitigate the flood prevention means 
if this is the height of the embankment, never water comes till here, then you, you prevented it. Water comes till here means you mitigated it. At least only some water is coming. If all is not there, all water will come now. Understand? So it's going to mitigation, prevention both. Now, shall I raise the board? Huh? <coughs> flood is a very important topic. Compared to earthquake or volcano, flood and drought are very important. UPSC in economy, in geography, disaster management, everywhere they give the uh, they give more questions on flood and drought because they are the biggest problems of India than earthquake and volcano. Now, listen carefully now. See, now let, us come, let, let me repeat the disaster management cycle again. When the flood occurred impact. What is the impact? Flood. Disaster. The first thing is respond. How do you respond? I told you no. By? Yeah, respond by? By, you know, evacuation. Search and rescue. Search and rescue. Giving the first aid. Providing the food, drinking water, medicines, blankets. Tin sheets, all these things. Respond. First you respond. After that you will give, you'll go for recovery. Recovery means what? Rehabilitation. Told you know. Rehabilitation means you ship the people to other village, other place for a few days. Provide them some livelihoods. Children some education, some food there. And then here you have to do, do reconstruction. You send the people to other village for some days. And in the this village, this, this village, which is destroyed, you reconstruct the houses, roads, uh, current network. Actually, friends, during the floods, even the cables are destroyed. Cables, you have to reconstruct them. Plumbing lines destroyed. Here, reconstruction. Okay, so recovery. Then, friends, I told you what I'll do. Huh? Either mitigation or prevention. And then preparedness. The preparedness, no? Evacuation also come. Actually, preparedness what? Early warning system, information dissemination, capacity building. I told you, no. Preparing safety maps, vulnerable assessment. All preparedness means being prepared. I told you, no. Before it occurs, you prepared. Preparedness. Mitigation also, I told how to mitigate a flood. How to prevent a flood also, I told. And response almost same response. Everybody in the water, no? Generally in the flood, no, water will be there. You will be in the water. So infections may spread. So medicines are very important. During the flood, when people stay in the flooded water, no, infections spread a lot. So medication is very important. First aid, uh, medicines are very important. And during the flood, the communication channels will be blocked. Roads will be removed. So nobody can come directly. So using using helicopters, you have to supply the food, water packets, blankets, everything. Okay, and sometimes you can airlift the people. Do you know what airlifting? Airlifting is, see, when the entire air is flooded, everybody uh, climbs some trees, trees or some buildings, whatever. Then from a helicopter, you can airlift them, take them away from the place. Okay, not always possible, some cases. So, friends, basically, this is a disaster management cycle for the flood. And for any crisis, any disaster, we have to divide them into, we have to divide any disaster into what you will do before the disaster, it's called pre-crisis and what you will do during the crisis and what you will do post-crisis. For example, you can't divide like this, before crisis what you have to do, you have to go for Prevention, prevention measures, mitigation measures, preparedness, preparedness measures, those things. During crisis, response, relief, relief response. After the crisis, recovery, reconstruction, rehabilitation, providing them a livelihood, giving education for children, all this come under the post crisis. So you should be able to divide them and write them off if possible. It will be interesting. Understand?
ఫ్రెండ్స్ యాక్చువల్లీ నేషనల్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అథారిటీ ఎన్డిఎంఏ హ్యాస్ గివెన్ ద సేమ్ గైడ్ లైన్స్ వాట్ ఎవర్ టోల్డ్ యూ టిల్ నౌ వాట్ ఎవర్ టోల్డ్ యూ టిల్ నౌ ద ప్రిపేర్నెస్ అర్లీ వార్నింగ్ డిస్టర్బ్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ కెపాసిటీ బిల్డింగ్ చెక్ డ్యామ్స్ ఆర్టిఫిషియల్ పాండ్స్ గ్రాస్ కవర్ ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ మెన్షన్ ఇన్ ది నేషనల్ డిజాస్టర్ ఐ మీన్ ఎన్డిఎంఏ ఎన్డిఎంఏ గైడ్ లైన్స్ టుడే యువర్ హోమ్ వర్క్ ఈస్ గో హోమ్ టైప్ ఇన్ ద గూగుల్ ఎన్డిఎంఏ గైడ్ లైన్స్ ఫర్ ది ఫ్లడ్స్ ఫ్లడ్ ఎన్డిఎంఏ గేవ్ గైడ్ లైన్స్ ఫర్ ఆల్ డిజాస్టర్స్ ఫ్లడ్ డ్రాట్ అర్త్ క్వేక్ ల్యాండ్ స్లైడ్ హీట్ వేవ్ కోల్డ్ వేవ్ ఈవెన్ యాక్సిడెంట్స్ ఎనీథింగ్ సో టుడే యువర్ హోమ్ వర్క్ ఈస్ you have to read the ndma guidelines for floods and you have to write down at least 10 points from that without that don't come to tomorrow's class you have to write okay take it to you bye